Moto yangu imenga Gloria Asante mola Mambo ya mebadilika Asante mola Siku nguvu zangu mi Kwa nguvu zako we Betu Ingekuwa ni mwana damu Wangeni ya mea Ingekuwa ni mwana damu Wangeni ya mea Umivo ni bariki Hi everybody, uh, praise the Lord. It's another beautiful day that the Lord has given to us and we have a lesson that we're going to learn today but before that I hope you are keeping warm now that the weather has turned very chilly and that you're also observing the COVID-19 safety uh, regulations that you were given and yeah, I'm happy to be here with you and we're going to start with the word of prayer. And mighty and everlasting Father, I come before you this time of the day. We want to give you thanks. And we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of each other, Lord. And as we learn what you have for us today, Father, may you help us understand. Open our ears, open our hearts to receive from you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, our lesson today will start with a, a story that I was given. So there was this uh, group of people who were traveling. Uh, they were they were flying from I don't remember the country they were flying from, but when they were on air, something happened, and the what do you call what do people fly on or fly in? I think it's aeroplanes. So something happened, and the airplane started moving from one side to the other, and everybody was so sure that they were going to die. People started screaming and then they started praying, which I think they were praying their last prayers. Have you ever seen people there when they are confused and when they are scared they start praying, saying it's their last prayers? Yes. So that is what they were doing. There was this man, he was seated next to a young girl and she was reading her storybook and she was not scared. So he kept looking at her and then for him, he was panicking and he was praying inwardly because he did not want to scare the little girl. The girl would lift her head from the book she was reading, she looks at the chaos, at the people and how they're screaming and the funny thing, she would just go back to her read and continue reading as if nothing was happening. So luckily enough, the plane landed and everyone ran off. It was held a skelter when they were running away. But this man remained behind and she asked this young girl, excuse me young girl, so why were you not scared? And the girl was like, ah, my dad was the one who was the pilot today. And the man was so shocked and he asked the girl, even when the aeroplane was moving from side to side and we knew that we were going to fall, yes, he was my dad, he cannot let me get hurt. And that shocked that man so much. And he went home wondering how such a young girl would trust her father so much that he would protect her even when there were chaos and nobody was sure what would happen. She was just, she trusted that her father would save her and the plane would not crash. And this brings us to our lesson today <coughs> about trusting in God. I don't know if you know some people who have ever trusted in God and in the Bible. You can ask your mom, your dad, or whoever you are with if they know anyone who has ever trusted in God from the Bible stories that we have read. So today we are going to learn about three young men who also trusted in God, just the same way that this young girl trusted in her father. And 
Our reading comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 30. It's a very long text, but what you can do after you have listened to this to the lesson today, one homework I will give you is to read the whole text of uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 to 30. So what I'm going to do, I will narrate the story for you, and then we can hear and we can see what this young man did. So it all started in a place, in a province called Babylon. And there was a king, his name was King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was uh, created a very, a very big statue. Or he asked his men to make a very big statue. And the statue was of, of the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. And everybody was told when the music was played, they would play different instruments. There was the harp, there was the flute, there was, um, what else do you think there was? Any kind of instrument that you think of that existed during that time. So there were horns, and every time the music was played, everyone was supposed to bow down and worship the statue of the king. And anyone who did not obey the rule would be thrown into a burning uh, furnace of fire. So when the music played, the flutes were played, the horns were played, the harps were played, everybody bowed down before the statue. But there were these three men who did not do it, and they were Jews. So some of the king's men went before the king, and they told him, um, you said that when the music is played, the harps, the flutes, the horns, and all other music instruments, when they are played, we should bow down before the king's statue. But then there are these three men who did not bow down. And so the king got so furious and he was like, who are these men? Bring them to me. So the names of these men were, anybody who knows the names of these men? Good, some of you know them. So there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, so when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went before the king, the king told them again that I have ordered, I have made a decree that when the music plays, the harp, the flute, the horn, and what else? Yes, all the music instruments. You are supposed to bow down before the king's statue. But this young man, they told him that they, it's something that they cannot do. And the king got so furious. But this, these three men were very confident and they trusted in God. And these are the words that they told the king. And these are found in um, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you as the king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you set up. And the king was so furious. He got so mad, he was filled with rage, and his expression changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you know what he did after that? So now he ordered that the furnace be, the fire be added, or rather he gave orders to heat the furnace seven more times. Like if it was this hot, then it had to become this hot. Do you, do you get it? I don't know if you get it, but it just became so hot. And then um, he asked his men to throw these three young men into that very hot furnace that had been uh, heat up seven more times. And um, they, they were, let's say they were dressed in robes, they had capes, just the way they were, they were, the way they had dressed, they were tied up and they were thrown into the furnace 
by the men. But the funny thing is, the men who threw them into the furnace got burnt and they got burnt completely. But these three men, they fell into the fire, into the furnace, poof, but they didn't burn. So, the king was watching from where he was seated and he, 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 he realized something funny and he jumped in alarm and he called one of his people and he asked, didn't we just throw three men into the fire? And they replied, yes, of course, your majesty. But I see four men walking in the furnace and they are not tied around as they were. And Nebuchadnezzar approached, now this is King Nebuchadnezzar, he approached the door and called out, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the furnace walking. And the other thing that was very, very interesting is that um, their hair was not burnt, they were not smelling of smoke, and they wouldn't have known they were inside a fire. So from that day, uh, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, said, that praise now this i'll tell you where this comes from this comes from daniel chapter 3 verse 28 to 30 and this is what it says nebuchadnezzar exclaimed praise to the god of shadrach and meshach and abednego he sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him did you get that i'll read that part again nebuchadnezzar exclaimed Praise to, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servant, who trusted in him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives, rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I issue a decree that anyone or of any people, nation, or language who says anything offensive against God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be torn limb from limb and his house made a garbage dump. Imagine. For there is no other God who is able to deliver like this. Then the king rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. And that is the end of the text. So, what do we learn from these three young men? That if we trust in God fully and then obey Him, He will come and rescue us. Alright? And sometimes there are people around us who give us um, rules and regulations, whether it is at home, whether it is at school, some are our friends, some are our big sisters, our big brothers. So these people, sometimes, they tell us to do things or they make us do things that do not please the Lord. But we as Christians should trust in Him because He is our Father and He also says that he is our friend. And you remember what Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego told the king that the God we serve will rescue us. And even if he does not rescue us, we will still not obey what the king is saying. And this is because they fully trusted in God. And our topic for today is trusting in God. And I'd like to know from you, have you ever had to trust in God in something? I'll give an example. During this corona, coronavirus period, we have had to trust in God. Um, we have had to trust in God because we are not sure what is happening. We are not sure what type of a disease it is. And also, there are other times when you have had to trust in God. There are days when you wake up and you're sick and you have to trust that God will heal you. 
if you have to go to the hospital, you have to trust that God will use these doctors to give you the right treatment, the right medicine, and you will get well. And some other times, you find that you are having problems at home and you don't know who to talk to, maybe it is a problem with your family, you can trust in God that he will rescue you and your family. And something else, children, that I have learned, if you trust in God, he uses you to show everyone that he has powers, that he is a mighty God. So when you trust in God, it also helps other people to trust in God. Especially when you trust in God, like these three young men, they trusted that God would rescue them from the fire, God would rescue them from the king himself. And when God did that, what happened? Even the king exclaimed and acknowledged that he is the most high God. So when you trust in God and other people see you trusting in God, then you bring other people closer to God. Right? So as little children, as older children, you have you are able to help even adults start trusting in God. And uh, so that is the end of our lesson today. And I am hoping and trusting and praying that we will find different ways in which you can trust in God and even when you're feeling like he does not exist just remember about Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego they were to be thrown in the fire who, who, who would like to be burnt because I am scared of being burnt you know but these people were not scared they knew that God would rescue them and did he rescue them? yes he rescued them so have a, a lovely week and do not forget that trust in God and he will always show up so I have a homework for you or an activity that I'd like for you to do we will learn a memory verse and it comes from Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 so anybody who knows what it says good so it says Trust in the Lord with all your heart and never lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on, on your own and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. So, for next week's lesson, I would like to know how many of you learned the memory verse. And you can make, you can write it on a big piece of paper and color it. You can write it with different colored biros or pens or crayons and then you stick it somewhere in your house. Is that okay? I will show you mine. I'm going to stick it on top of my bed and it looks like this. So I will stick it near my bed or on, on, on my bed up there so that every day when I wake up I am reminded to trust in God. So I would like to see what you will do and I will ask, we will find a way to get it from your parents. Have a blessed week and may the Lord bless you. We will see each other some other time. Bye bye.